Six years after her daughter's disappearance, Simone didn't lose hope of finding her. While working as a cleaner in a mansion, fate revealed something she could never imagine. Simone was pushing the baby stroller in the park, enjoying the afternoon sun with her newborn baby, while talking on the phone with her childhood friend. Simone was happy, despite all the difficulty of being a single mother. Finally, she had managed to get some free time to distract and relax while talking on the phone. Simone noticed a dog barking tirelessly nearby and turned to look. She was distracted, trying to understand amid those annoying barks, what her friend was saying and why that dog was barking so much. After hanging up, Simone checked if her daughter hadn't woken up because of the barks, but when she realized, her heart sank in her chest, the baby stroller was empty, and Clara was no longer there. Simone was paralyzed, not knowing what to do. She tried to scream, but she was so shocked that her voice wouldn't come out. She ran back and forth, asking everyone passing by the park if they had seen someone with a small baby in their arms. Some ignored her, while others tried to help, but without success. Simone went into despair and fell to her knees, crying and shouting for her daughter's name. She had never felt so much pain and anguish in her life. The police were called, and they searched the park and surroundings, but found no sign of Clara. In the blink of an eye, the child had disappeared without a trace. Simone was inconsolable, asking herself how she could have lost her daughter like this. She couldn't eat or sleep, and her life turned into a complete, senseless void. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months. Simone continued searching for her daughter everywhere possible, but found no sign of her. She began living a lonely life, full of sadness and pain. Her only hope was that one day she could find her little girl. Six years had passed, and Simone's life continued empty and sad. She worked as a domestic worker in various households, but had never worked in a mansion like the one she was working in now, in her recent job. On her first day, she was impressed by the grandeur and beauty of the place. She felt small amidst so much wealth. Simone had been hired by Patricia, a rude and bitter woman. She knew it would be difficult to work for someone like that, but the salary was good, and she really needed the money to survive. Simone worked tirelessly to meet Patricia's demands. She cleaned the house, washed clothes, and did shopping, but despite all Simone's efforts, Patricia always found something to criticize. She complained about the cleanliness of the clothes and anything else she could find to complain about. However, despite the constant criticisms, she continued working hard and didn't mind. After all, it was a way to keep her mind occupied with other things and not on her daughter. In this way, the days were a little lighter. Patricia was married to Eduardo, a man of radiant beauty and a charming smile. Unlike his wife, he was extremely friendly and charismatic, treating everyone with great respect. Simone didn't understand how he could be with such a bitter person so different from him. The couple had a daughter named Isabella, a sweet and very intelligent little girl. However, Simone felt sorry for the child, noticing how lonely she was, living only under the care of the nanny, without the proper attention from her mother. Whenever Simone saw the girl running around the house, her heart saddened, and her day turned bad. She kept remembering her baby Clara and imagining how she would be now. Simone lived with the weight of guilt and couldn't forgive herself. Her day only returned to have a little light when Eduardo came home. The beauty of that man overshadowed any place and left Simone enchanted. 
she could barely disguise it. The man always greeted her and started a conversation, leaving Simone completely embarrassed and ashamed. But over time, she began to feel more comfortable, starting to talk more with him. Meanwhile, Eduardo's wife didn't stay at home, she was always out with her friends at the salon or shopping. This was a relief for all the employees, as the days she didn't go out, the atmosphere at home was terrible. Eduardo and Patricia frequently argued, and it was noticeable to everyone that their marriage was problematic. One day, after a big fight between them, Patricia left home and went to sleep at her mother's house. Eduardo was tired of so many fights and disagreements and wanted to confide in Simone, however, her shift was ending, and she told him she needed to leave. Eduardo kindly asked her to stay a bit longer to keep him company, not wanting to be rude, Simone agreed to stay a few more hours. They spent hours drinking wine and talking. Suddenly, Eduardo approached Simone abruptly and kissed her. We interrupt the program to give an urgent notice, hey, you there, yes, you who haven't subscribed to the channel yet, what are you waiting for? It's quick, free, and will help us a lot. Click the button below and join our community now. At that moment, Simone reacted without response and asked him what he was doing, as that couldn't have happened. Eduardo apologized and said he regretted it, but he couldn't hold back anymore. Simone also felt something for him, but she knew it wasn't right. She decided to leave because things had already crossed the line. The next day, Patricia was back and furious, Isabella's babysitter had missed work, and she was about to go out to get her nails done. Simone was arriving to start her shift when she was surprised by Patricia's request for her to stay that day as Isabella's babysitter. Simone didn't mind, after all, taking care of the girl would be much easier than cleaning the house. She looked after Isabella as if she were her own daughter and could feel what it would be like if Clara hadn't disappeared. Isabella was a lovely girl and had nothing to do with her mother. Simone had never had such close contact with the girl before. Because of the rush of tasks, she had never approached the girl. Simone was combing Isabella's hair and listening to her enthusiastically talk about her day at school. It was the first time they were together, but they talked and laughed as if they had known each other for years. But suddenly, something caught Simone's attention and left her completely frozen while combing Isabella's hair. Simone noticed a mark on the girl's neck very similar to the one Clara had, and this perplexed her. The memory of her daughter's disappearance came back, and a thousand things started running through her head. She began to consider the possibility of Isabella being her missing daughter. Simone asked Isabella how old she was, and the girl replied that she was six. This answer further stirred Simone's suspicions because it was exactly six years ago that her little Clara had disappeared. Isabella was the right age to be her daughter, but she needed to act cautiously and be sure before doing anything. Simone then took a strand of Isabella's hair, which was on the comb and as soon as possible would secretly request the DNA test. Eduardo had just arrived home, and Simone tried to keep away from him and not raise any suspicions. She knew she had feelings for him, but now she suspected everyone and didn't exactly know who he was. Eduardo noticed that Simone was strange and indifferent, but she tried to disguise it and said it was because of tiredness. The next day, before returning to work, Simone went to a clinic to request the DNA test. She thought she would have the answer the same day, but she was irritated to find out she would have to wait a week for the test to be ready. When she arrived at work, 
She tried to act normally because she couldn't let anyone find out what she was doing. Her job was at stake, and if Isabella really was her daughter, she risked losing her again, as Eduardo and Patricia could probably flee with the girl if they found out she was investigating. Simone always watched Isabella playing in the house and wondered if she really was her daughter. Her heart was heavy and she couldn't bear so much anxiety, a week seemed like a year. Meanwhile, Eduardo tried to approach Simone again, apologizing for what had happened, believing she was indifferent because of the kiss. She said it was okay and that it was better to forget what had happened between them because it would never happen again. But Eduardo, holding Simone's hand, said that no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't get her out of his head and that what had happened meant a lot to him. Simone was confused because she felt attracted to Eduardo, but at the same time, she knew that if Isabella really was her daughter, it meant that Patricia and Eduardo could be responsible for her baby's disappearance. At that moment, Patricia had arrived silently and ended up hearing the whole conversation between the two. The woman was furious, started arguing with Eduardo, and in screams, expelled Simone from the house. Simone was desperate, not knowing what to do, crying, she left without even being able to say goodbye to Isabella. But her biggest concern now was not unemployment, feelings for Eduardo, or anything like that. The only thing that disturbed her peace was whether Isabella really was her lost daughter, and she didn't want to be away from her until it was confirmed otherwise. Day after day, she called the clinic to see if the DNA test results were ready until the day finally came for her to discover the truth. The test was ready, and Simone didn't hesitate to pick it up immediately. As soon as she arrived at the clinic, they gave her a white envelope, there was the result. Simone's heart was racing and her hands were trembling, she couldn't believe she was about to discover the truth. When she finally opened the envelope, her eyes quickly scanned the page until she found the answer she had been eagerly awaiting. Isabella was indeed her daughter. Simone felt immense happiness and relief, she couldn't believe it, her eyes filled with tears. She read the result to make sure she was interpreting it correctly. With the test in hand, Simone immediately ran to a police station and told the whole story. The authorities acted swiftly, taking Eduardo and Patricia to prison. Eduardo was in shock, not knowing what was happening, imagining it was all a mistake. Meanwhile, Patricia was in tears and visibly shaken, she knew there was no way out. After hours of interrogation, Patricia eventually confessed the whole truth. She said she had taken the baby from the park because she didn't want to ruin her body with a pregnancy, and that she only pretended to be pregnant out of love for Eduardo, who wanted to be a father very much. So, on a certain day, taking advantage of Eduardo being away on a business trip, she pretended to have had an early delivery, telling him that the child had already been born. Patricia, with her coldness, pretended to be Clara's mother for six years, without fearing that one day she would be discovered. Eduardo couldn't believe it when he heard Patricia's confession. He never imagined she would be capable of doing something so terrible and cowardly. With Patricia's confession, he was set free and could move on with his life. However, now it would be away from Isabella, or rather, away from Clara, since she wasn't his real daughter. This devastated him. Despite not being the biological father, he had raised the little girl with much love and never let anything be lacking for her. Simone knew it would be difficult for Clara to assimilate everything that was happening, and therefore, she should have a lot of patience. 
because, to Clara, Simone was still a stranger. The girl didn't want to leave the house where she grew up and wanted to stay close to Eduardo, whom she believed to be her father, to prevent Clara from getting too confused and Simone from getting hurt. Since he wasn't with his daughter, Eduardo invited them to live in the mansion with them, so Clara wouldn't have to leave the house, and gradually Simone could get closer to the girl. Simone, without hesitation, accepted, after all, she didn't want to stay another second away from her daughter. Over time, she and Eduardo grew even closer and entered into a serious relationship. Together, they formed a happy and loving family, with Clara, who grew up surrounded by love and affection every day. Simone is grateful for having had the opportunity to reunite with her daughter and hopes that all families who unfortunately suffer from something similar can be enlightened and blessed with the reunion. As one day she was and in the next story, Ted Coop, originally from Australia, gifted his girlfriend with a handmade necklace that he had made himself. However, the young woman did not imagine that within that necklace there was something hidden, something she would only discover years later. Click on the next video that will appear on the screen and follow this impressive twist. Thank you for watching, comment below what you thought of this story and from which city you are watching us. Leave your like and subscribe to our channel so that, together, we can build a huge community that shares inspiring stories. See you later.